Relax. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath. <sighs> Welcome to Pillow Talk Radio, the most delicious place to be. On this podcast, we explore how to create more connection, possibility, romance, and magic in love and in life. I'm your host and relationship specialist, Cora Boyd. Are you with me? What up, pillow talkers? Welcome back to the pod, y'all. Did you see that I posted on my Instagram last week that this podcast surpassed 10,000 streams? That's so awesome. That is so awesome. Thank you for listening. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for spreading the word, for being here, whether it is your first time here or you are a returning visitor, returning pillow talker. I so appreciate you. And it's just really exciting for me. That's really exciting for me. And it's a, hey, it's a team win. (laughs) It's a team win for all of us. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Please continue to share when you feel inspired, you learn something. I I really appreciate it. And it's just so helpful for getting this content out there, helping more people, igniting more mischief in this world. So thank you. This episode, we're going to keep this a brief one, and I'm just going to offer a three-step process for you that will be really helpful as you're learning, as you're shifting, growing, expanding, reprogramming beliefs, et cetera, et cetera. So there is a delicate step, a delicate piece of the sequence when we are learning something new shifting our inner way of being, our outer way of being, growing, learning, basically doing something differently than we have been doing, than we're accustomed to doing, than we have a habit around doing, or a well-ingrained neural pathway around a certain belief. There's a delicate step as we do this. First, we have identified a limiting belief, right? Someone has reflected back to us a limiting belief, somehow awareness around a limiting belief and that you have been operating from a limiting belief gets on your radar. The really exciting part and shifting a limiting belief is this awareness, is this new awareness that we have around it. The delicate step is that Something we can do to stall ourselves and keep ourselves stuck is when we notice with our new awareness around a limiting belief, when we notice ourselves operating from that place or thinking that thing or or whatever the case might be, and with our new awareness, we notice who or what thought (laughs) or part of ourselves has been unconsciously steering the ship, as you often hear me say, as I like to say, right? So what will keep us stuck in that moment, what will stall our progress is when upon noticing that we're doing the thing that has been holding us back, that has been keeping us stuck, we go into shame. We notice we're doing it. We're like, fuck, I'm doing that thing. I'm doing that thing. So-and-so reflected back to me or Cora talked about in the podcast fuck, I'm doing that thing. And we go into shame or self-criticism, which actually compounds and stalls the shifting of that limiting belief or that way of operating. So what we want to do instead, when we notice, oh, fuck, I was thinking that thing again, or I was doing that thing again that I don't want to be doing anymore. Instead of going into self-shame, which is just another form of sabotage, which will prolong the process, do this instead. The first step is to recognize what is happening. Oh, I'm noticing myself thinking or doing that unconscious thing that I am learning and practicing not to do anymore. That is what is happening. Recognize what is happening. Next step, step two. Celebrate yourself for your awareness. So instead of going into shame of like, fuck, I did that thing, go into, oh, I noticed myself doing that thing. Fuck yeah. 
fuck yeah, look at me extricating myself from that pattern to the extent that I'm able to have awareness and notice when I'm doing it. That's an awesome sign. Celebrate yourself for the awareness. Step three, shift your energy and your focus to the new belief or the new way of being that you are anchoring in, that you are practicing. So what happens when we're lamenting the old thing having surfaced, which of course it fucking is. It's going to surface. It's a habit, right? It's a habit of thought. It's, it's something we're accustomed to unconsciously doing. We're doing it on autopilot. So of course it's going to come up. And what feeds it energy is us feeding it energy, right? So it's what do we want to feed energy to? We want to feed energy to and anchor in and lock in our new way of being. And this is, this is proactivity work of actually taking the time, whether it's through journaling, sitting with yourself, but clarifying what we're choosing to believe or we're choosing to do instead so that in these moments where we're in reactivity, we don't have to pull it out of our ass. We know, oh, actually, I, here's what I'm giving my energy towards reaffirming now right? So for example, if we're shifting our relationship with food to be a more conscious relationship, and we're used to just totally numbing out and, you know, watching TV or scrolling on our food every time we eat, which leads us to make decisions or perpetuate behaviors around food that are unconscious, that are the default that we have gotten clarity around, hey, we don't want to do that anymore let's say you sit down to eat and the new thing that you're anchoring in is I am going to savor my food and be present with my experience when I'm eating so that I can bring more consciousness to this and appreciation to my relationship with food, right? If you notice yourself sitting down to eat and bringing out your phone to scroll, right? We could be like, fuck, God, I did the thing again. Or we're like, fuck yeah. Oh, I noticed myself doing the thing. Okay, what am I anchoring into instead? Okay, I'm gonna put away the phone. I'm gonna like really taste my food, et cetera, et cetera, right? You see what I'm saying? So this is another way I like to think of it. it when we have the thing we're choosing instead prepared, it's the difference between a train going down a track at full force and then there's a roadblock and we're like, oh, that old thing again right? And then the, the train just screeching to a halt and being like, ah, we did it again, right? Instead of having a, another track that the train can continue to move forward, it just clicks into a different direction. It clicks into a different track. Know that when you are growing and shifting how you're operating and the beliefs, you're reprogramming the beliefs that are steering the ship or the train or, you know, choose your transportation vessel of choice. Know that in order to stay stuck in that pattern, our subconscious, our unconscious, our ninjita mind, our ninja mind, as I like to call it, y'all know this at this point, is going to want you to go into shaming around doing the thing again. The way that you actually shift is by go through the sequence, recognize what is happening, celebrate yourself for your awareness, shift your energy towards anchoring in the new. That's it. A brief one. I hope this was helpful and I will talk to y'all on the next pod. So yes, as always, as I said at the beginning, please share this. Please tag me on Instagram. I love interacting with you and we'll catch you next time. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Pillow Talk Radio. I'm Cora Boyd, and make sure to subscribe so we can keep you in the loop. In the interim, you can find me on Instagram at the Cora Boyd, YouTube Cora Boyd, website CoraBoydCoaching.com. Have an excellent rest of your day, night, morning, evening, whatever it is, wherever you are, and we'll catch you next week.